Good evening guys, um, as always I'm mostly talking about DGOC and today I want to do something different. I uh, want to give you an overview of the sector and in specific about the Appalachian Basin, so where DGOC operates and I just want to do like a sector analysis and check different companies in the vicinity and see how they have been operating. The reason why I got to this idea is because, uh, well, we've seen the news that DGOC is uh, acquiring from two different companies. And since yesterday morning, we know that the, the names of the companies as well, of both companies. And uh, I included these in the sector analysis as well. So I just want to go over it and tell you a bit like what I saw, what I noticed and why DGOC is, is basically the winner in all of this. So let's get right to it. So the companies that we're going through are the following nine companies. First is the Antero Resources Corporation, followed by Cabot Oil and Gas, CNX, CNX. Fourth, we have Diversified Gas and Oil. On the fifth, we have the EQT, which is one of the companies that uh, DGOC is acquiring assets from. Then we have Gulfport Energy followed by Range Resources, South Southwestern Energy, and last but not least, we have Carbon Energy. You can also see the ticker symbols in the market cap to the right. Carbon Energy is also a company where DGC is acquiring assets from, so it's gonna be interesting to keep these two in mind when we are going through the statistics. Let's start with a few key metrics. So, in the first column, you see the ticker symbol followed by the enterprise value. So the enterprise value, if you don't know, is the, the market cap minus the cash that they have plus all the debt that they have, simply put it. So if you would go back in this video and check the market cap and compare it to enterprise value, you see that sometimes there's a big difference. For example, uh, Antero Resources, the number one, has a very big difference, like the market cap was below 1 billion and the enterprise value is over 7 billion. That basically means that they have a lot of debt. So in and of itself, it's probably gonna be a riskier business. Then you have Cabot Gas and Oil, the second one. They had a market cap of around 8 billion, I believe, and they only have an enterprise value of 9 billion. So they have relatively little debt. Uh, we'll get to that later, but that's already interesting to, to look at. On the third column, we have the EBITDA, and uh, I marked the two numbers red because they have a negative EBITDA, and once a company has a negative EBITDA, you already need to be on the alert because this is like the earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So this is the earnings before they write off the assets that they have been using. So the fact that they have such a bad EBITDA is, 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 is scary, to say the least. So obviously they should be marked red. And to the right, we have the enterprise value divided by EBITDA. And that is basically a valuation metric that I've been using before. I've used three different colors throughout the, the, the video. Uh, green is obviously good. Yellow is like, it's not good, but it's not bad either. And red is just plain bad. So uh, as you can see, the two companies that seemed mostly undervalued are Southwestern Energy. So the number eight and DGOC. So they look pretty interesting based on this evaluation, but the, the other three green ones don't look that bad either. At the end, we have a summary and I will be summarizing all the colors and see which companies score best based on what we have seen so far and how we've rated them. But this is just one of the key metrics and I have three more in this uh, subject. So let's get to the second one. Here you see the free cash flow. You see the market cap and you see the price divided by free cash flow. So this is another valuation metric and this is the one I prefer. And because I just like free cash flow because that is the, the value that returns to shareholders. So that is basically the money that we will get uh, out of the company once we invest in it. And here you can see clear that there are only three winners and the three winners are winning by a long shot. So you have uh, Antero Resources, which is, was, has the uh, uh, price to free cash flow of almost one, meaning that one investment could basically return your entire investment, one free cash flow, sorry. And then you have followed by Carbon Energy and DGOC. The only thing 
that could be scary and that's because I've seen a little bit more of Ontario resources is because they have a lot of debt and they have recently dropped a lot in price if you go to the uh, share price you can see that they have dropped 90-95% throughout the last five years so it could very well be the case that this free cash flow that they have right now is not sustainable obviously we're not going to go in that kind of depth right now so based on these metrics these three companies look pretty good then we have this one it's operational cash flow the capital expenditures and then basically the ratio of how much capital expenditures they have compared to their operational cash flow so how much of the, the money that their business earns do they have to spend on capital expenditures basically to keep their business afloat the lower the ratio the better it is for the business if it's above one it means that they are spending more than it's coming in just to sustain as a business that's not something we want to see so everything close to one or above one is instantly red and you can see here that there are five companies that are red so uh, and then you have two yellow ones they have a pretty decent uh, capital expenditure since it's below their operational cash flow so it's like their business is still doing something but it doesn't look that attractive this is something that is a bit uh, discussed within the investment world because it is a common belief that within oil and gas that they a company needs to have a lot of capital expenditures to grow and obviously we know the the business model of dgoc and if you haven't you should check out my previous videos and it is not necessary to or not necessarily necessary to have a high cap capex to grow obviously you can also acquire assets which is what dgoc has been doing so based on this there's only two companies that look interesting and then you have the anterior resources and dgoc let's continue with survivability with survivability i'm going to look at two things first we're going to look at short term and then we're going to look at long term like how sustainable is their business model and with business model i tend to focus a bit on the the the, the ebitda compared to their balance sheet but let's start with the, the short term survivability so we look at operational cash flow that means in one year how much money is coming in and we compare it to the short-term debt and we just want to see uh, if their short-term debt can be covered by the operational cash flow i if it's above one they basically have enough but if it's close to one at least in my opinion it tends to be a bit more riskier because you are in a commodity business and the gas price currently are low so compared to last year you will probably have less cash coming in so if you could cover last year barely with your operational cash flow you could barely cover the short-term debt then this year it is more likely than not that you are will that you will be unable to cover it so i made those yellow but keep in mind that that could be very risky as well so here we see that uh, cabot gas and oil has done very well they have uh, they have very little debt and they have a strong operational cash flow so that means that yeah they're not likely to go bankrupt anytime soon even in this price environment and that is basically what you'll see if you start looking at analysis from other investors or just analysis analysts sorry then you'll see that uh, cabot gas and oil is really a favorite and that is also why it's a bit more expensive than others but one thing that i really like to point out here is the eqt you see that they have 1.10 uh, so they can barely cover their short-term debt and what you see right now is that dgoc is acquiring an asset from them and the only reason why eqt would want to sell something is just because they need the quick uh, cash coming in because they need to cover their expenses and they cannot wait for the the field to be milked and that is why they're selling it and so you can see that the 110 is probably too risky still and 136 could also probably be too risky but maybe 178 which you see at cnx that could be more on the safe side and the other one is the bottom one is the other part that uh, gg tgoc is acquiring an asset from is carbon energy and there you see that they have a very bad bad sorry operational cash flow compared to their short-term debt so they cannot cover it and that is likely why they're probably going to sell such a big asset because they just need the money right now then we're going to look at the long-term 
survivability and in that case i will cover their net debt which is like the short-term debt plus long-term debt minus their uh, like short-term cash or cash cash equivalents and i'm gonna divide this by their ebitda so this is basically a ratio to uh, to protect the balance sheet and dgoc has a policy to have it between 2 and 2.5 and that is something that they tend to not go over even though in this environment with their business model i would like to see that they go to three but that's just my personal preference and uh, if it's above three it becomes more riskier and probably above four it's going to be already very risky but if you look at the other companies sure the cog cabot gas and oil is doing very uh, good but yeah they have low debt so you can see that here as well and then you have southwestern Ener energy who is also doing pretty well but the other companies like Antero Resources 6, they are so leveraged compared to the others. And then you have EQT, who is extremely leveraged compared to the EBITDA. So they are probably in, in big danger. And that is why they need to sell the assets. They just need to sell part of their assets just to generate money and to pay off the debt that they owe. And you can see the same for uh, carbon energy. So if you just do this, a sector analysis and you look at these numbers and you can already a bit like assume which companies are going to sell assets and which companies could very well acquire assets and Cabot gas and oil oil and gas for example could also be on the lookout for new assets based on this analysis but this is just like an overview and it's kind of interesting to see these companies and compare them to one another and to see okay which one is healthy and which one is not but next we're going to look at the growth and that's going to be highly unusual. So what I've done here is I've looked at the re revenue growth, the operational cash flow growth and the free cash flow growth. And what I've done, I've looked at 2016 and I've looked at 2019 and I have uh, calculated the annual compounding growth rate. So you can see a big difference here. You can see CNX with a negative revenue growth rate. You can see southwestern who barely has any growth rate and then you have ddoc who almost has a 200 percent revenue growth rate per year in the past three years and you have carbon energy which is a smaller company as well they have an insane growth rate as well but as we've just seen it also matters how the balance sheet is looking because if you have such a strong growth in revenue as you see with carbon but at the end you are not able to sustain these assets and to milk them to produce gas from them then it could very well be the case that uh, you have to sell it again and basically rules lose the the gains that you've had in growth and if you look at operational cash flow growth you see a big difference as well you see carbon energy with a big negative uh, operational cash flow growth and you see ddoc with a amazing growth rate in operational cash flow and obviously that is because they have acquired assets and they've also had share dilution so it's a bit taken out of proportion but nonetheless these numbers are looking pretty good then we go to free cash flow growth and that one is looking pretty bad even for dgoc so what we see here the with the formula that I've, I've used if the free cash flow is starts negatively then whatever outcome there will be whatever growth there will be it will be a negative free cash flow growth even though it is positive so for DGOC, it was like minus 5 million, and three years later, it was, it was a positive uh, 260 million or something like that. And still, it has like a negative of minus 500% growth rate. So you should take that with a grain of salt, but nonetheless, I want to put it in there because you can here you can clearly see that in 2016, since most of these companies had a negative free cash flow, it was probably a very tough business to be in the gas industry or oil partially as well so i just leave it out there i'm gonna take this into the evaluation at the end of the, the video but i think it is interesting to uh, uh, to see it but you should also keep in mind that these numbers are not entirely correct so growth take it with a grain of salt and it shouldn't be what you're looking for right now anyway because if you want to invest in this industry you just want to pick the one that survives because it's such a it's such a war out there right now so you just want to be able to pick the company that survives and then grow on that finally or not finally next almost finally we're going to look at management so what i've done here i've looked at the insider percentage and 
I also looked at the insider percentage minus the number one shareholder. It tends to be the CEO or the president or whatnot of the company. But I thought it would be interesting to see that as well because the the more spread out the the insider percentage is, the better it tends to be for shareholders because more people within the business are confident that the business will be more uh, valuable in the future. And lastly, I, I added insider buying. Uh, this is just something that I, I find very interesting to see if companies are recently buying and what their thoughts are and so on. Because you if manage, management always knows more. So if they are deciding to buy shares, then chances are that it will be good for you to buy shares. And if they're selling, then, well, think twice before you should buy. Because why would they sell if they think it's going to go up? So let's let's look at a few numbers. DGOC 7.3. A Antero Resources 8.10 is a very strong number and then you have Carbon Energy who has 11.10 at the bottom and you can also see that once they have a higher percentage insiders then the insider percentage X number one is also pretty strong so you guys already know that I like DGC because of the the high diversity in, uh, in management and shareholders so they have like over eight which all have a, a pretty big stake in the company at least more than I have, or I could have actually. So that's all interesting. And um, as you also notice, I didn't put any red numbers here because as long as there is an insider percentage, there is an insider that has incentive to make the stock go up. And I think that is very important. Uh, if I had to make one red or two red, it would be the number seven and eight, like Range Resources and Southwestern, because their numbers are pretty, pretty slim, but nonetheless, if you look at it from uh, their own valuation, that's still a high percentage of like personal value that they have in it, like net worth, I should say. So I, I decided to make it yellow. I don't think as long as there is like if it's 0.01% or something, then yeah, I would make it red. But as long as there is some stake, it tends to be better than no stake at all. And then to look at insider buying. One that really jumped out was uh, Cabot Gas and Oil because they have been selling in the past three months. So they have been selling recently, which tends to be very, very scary if, if the stock has been pretty steady and the market has been uh, like the, the, the gas market has been dropping significantly overall. And then you have a steady company and then management is selling shares. It's, it's like, OK, your alarm should go off. Regardless, I didn't use any colors for this because I I. Um, it would be too many options in this case. So what what is nice to notice is that there's several companies that have been buying recently and these companies actually look pretty unhealthy. So if you look at uh, Gulfport, Range Resources, EQT, like we just saw EQT and uh, we know that they're selling assets, but they have had a lot of recent insider buying. It was surprising to me. And then obviously you have DGOC who just have been buying like five to seven management uh, of shareholders, insiders that have been buying every quarter consistently. So that's just looking good. Like it doesn't matter what share price it is, buy, 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 buy. That's what we want to see. Then finally, we're going to look at the moat. In this case, it's going to be hard to identify the moat in a business where everybody's basically doing the same. And these are all small cap, mid cap businesses. And if you look at the big boys like uh, Saudi Aramco, Shell, BP, then sure, they have like a way better moat based on their uh, the amount of shares that the, or the, the the market cap. I mean, sorry. And so we're not going to look at a moat like that. Obviously, nobody's going to own the business in this industry, not even the big boys. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to look at costs. So what we want to see, we want to see a low capex. We want to see strong operating margin and we want to see low capex compared to the operational cash flow, which we have already been looking at, but I thought it would be nice to mention it here again. So operating margin, we see three businesses that are performing very well. We have uh, Cabot Oil and Gas, we have Diversified Gas and Oil, and we have Gulfport. Gulfport. They have all like above 20 or some even above 30 uh, operating margin, which is looking very good. And then we go to capex to revenue then we see that uh, Antero Resources who has a pretty bad operating margin actually has a very good capex spending compared to revenue and if we look at the previous years you can actually see that they have been significantly dropping 
their capex so they have been reducing the, the capex and is that a good sign uh in general i don't mind it but what's important is that they can still grow as a business so you don't want them to reduce capex and then realize okay well revenue is also dropping so that is something to keep in mind if we were considering to invest in this company and then we have dgoc and carbon who basically have the same capex to revenue uh, so that is pretty strong and you know that i already like that the uh, dgoc is spending so so little on uh, capital expenditures and then you have the the cap capex to uh, the operational cash flow and there you see that dgoc and anterior resources are also performing very well so the others are actually performing pretty poorly and uh, you can see all the red numbers and some are even above their operational cash flow so they're like spending more that's coming in and that was in 2019 and now the prices are way worse so it looks pretty scary for these companies even though management is buying shares so it's something to keep in mind so let's add all these numbers up and let's do that in the summary so what i've done i've just had a column red yellow green and based on this you can see okay which companies are performing better than the the others i haven't ranked them per se because i think it's going to be hard to rank them and i think every company if you are going to consider investing in it should have a way deeper dive into it but i think it, it gives you a, a general idea of why you should be looking at dgoc if you want to invest in this kind of business obviously these metrics were chosen by me so these are metrics that I find important. You already know that I invest in DGOC, so you might actually say that I'm biased towards it. But nonetheless, I think these metrics are important, even if you invest in another company in this industry. So if I would apply the same metrics and I would find an even better company, obviously that's going to have my intention, uh, attention, I should say. So we see that DGOC scores with 11 green and one red. And we also know that the one red is actually the free cash flow that started negatively. But that's just because we have dived uh, or have been diving deeper in this company already. Otherwise, you wouldn't have known it. And then you see that uh, Antero Resources and Cabot Gas, Oil and Gas are actually a pretty close second with uh, seven in green. And the others are actually scoring pretty poorly with uh, Rangers Resources probably scoring the worst. So that is something to keep in mind. Uh, you see EQT also scoring pretty poorly overall. And that is probably why they're selling a pretty interesting asset as well, because they just need the money. And for carbon energy, I think they have been performing pretty well. Once I looked at all the information out there, it's just that they were too leveraged. They had too many oblig obligations and uh, liabilities in the short term. And yeah, you just need money then. And if you can't sell it at a decent price, then yeah, you're going to need to sell good assets and that's basically what's happening now and DGOC is able to profit for off of that I also checked the carbon energy real quick in their investor relations page and I noticed that the first page was in the 8k form and I believe that their uh, uh, debt facility so that how much money they can borrow had actually been lowered recently and if you compare that to DGOC they, they've actually had an increase in their borrowing so you just can see if you compare all these businesses in the same area or same vicinity then you can see okay which companies are doing well and which companies are doing poor and if one company is acquiring assets from the other then that company is probably performing very well as well so that's it for today i hope you guys learned um, obviously this is not investing advice i think i should start saying that because uh, i've getting i've been growing a bit and you should always do your own due diligence and i think i'll just make a finishing page in the future that will just state that because we all know it but for some reason it seems like an obligation that we should mention it though i'm not a financial advisor so keep that in mind um yeah i hope you guys found it interesting if you did please consider leaving a like i know that i already made like an animation i uh put a lot of time and effort in it and it's not really my specialty so i hope it's appreciated and um, yeah, if you would like to see a different sector analysis or you want to know more about DGC or the gas industry or whatnot, please let me know. In general, I would also just like to know oh, what you guys are interested in. Do you just want me to, sh to show you videos about sector analysis and company analysis? Or do you actually want me to explain more how 
I go about it, how I look at these companies and what I'm looking for and how I decide what I'm looking for and so on. So more examples or more knowledge. That's basically what I'm wondering what you guys want. And obviously I can also combine the two. So please let me know. I want to create good content for you. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. For now, I am shutting this video off. So I wish you guys a great evening.